May your, May choices, your choices reflect, reflect your, hopes, your hopes, not your, not fears. your fears. Food for Soul and Goa co-working present today's readings and reflection. November 13th, 2022. 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Lo, the day is coming, blazing like an oven, when all the proud and all evildoers will be stubble, and the day that is coming will set them on fire, leaving them neither root nor branch, says the Lord of hosts. But for you who fear my name, there will arise the Son of Justice with its healing rays. The Word of the Lord. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. The Lord comes to Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melody of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. Let the sea and what fills it resound, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, the mountains shout with them for joy. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He will rule the world with justice and the peoples with equity. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know how one must imitate us. For we did not act in a disorderly way among you, nor did we eat food received free from anyone. On the contrary, in toil and drudgery, night and day we worked, so as not to burden any of you. Not that we do not have the right. Rather, we wanted to present ourselves as a model for you, so that you might imitate us. In fact, when we were with you, we instructed you that if anyone was unwilling to work, neither should that one eat. We hear that some are conducting themselves among you in a disorderly way, by not keeping busy, but minding the business of others. Such people we instruct and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to work quietly, and to eat their own food. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? 
and what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however, they will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking, that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Reflection on Today's Readings by Bob The end is coming. These words could describe today's readings. What is even more important than the fact that the end is coming? What is more important is what we do with the time we have until the end. Malachi speaks the word of the Lord and announces that the day is coming when all will met with, and receive, their just rewards. The psalmist announces that the Lord is coming to rule the world with justice. In his letter to the Thessalonians, St. Paul cautions the Thessalonians that although it is true that the Lord Jesus is coming, that does not mean that the faithful should sit around and do nothing, but rather they should do their fair share in the work that must be done before Jesus returns. In the Gospel, Jesus predicts the end of Jerusalem and also the end of the world, and he warns his disciples that they may have to suffer, even at the hands of family and friends, in their proclaiming of the good news. In the last book of the Hebrew Scriptures, Malachi, a name meaning my messenger, warns the people that the day of the Lord's coming is near. When the Lord comes, the sinful will justly experience the results of their wrongdoings, while those who honor and respect the name of the Lord will be justly blessed with healing, salus. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. This refrain for the responsorial summarizes the words from Malachi. The Lord comes to administer true justice to all peoples. Those who have not lived a faith-filled life would be judged harshly while the faithful will know the mercy and justice of God. As he writes to the believers in Thessalonica, St. Paul addresses the misunderstanding and misbehavior of some people in the community. Some have taken the position that because the Lord Jesus will be coming back, and quite soon, they believe, then they believe that they do not have to do anything. They have refused to work and have spent their time, talking about others rather than working for the good of the whole. Paul points to his own actions while living with them. He, the apostle to the Gentiles, never presumed to have others serve him, even though he was preaching the gospel. He earned his way by working his trade as a tent maker. If he, the preacher of the truth and proclaimer of the Lord Jesus coming, worked even while proclaiming the good news, so should all other believers. In Luke's Gospel, Jesus' words about the destruction of Jerusalem and the end of the world have a different emphasis than the parallel reading in Mark 13. Part of the reason for this is that Mark wrote before the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, whereas Luke wrote after the destruction of Jerusalem. There seems to be a separation between Jerusalem's end and the world's end. 
The period before the final coming of the Lord Jesus will be marked by wars, natural disasters, and the persecution of the followers of Jesus. Jesus urges his disciples not to worry about how they will handle the suffering because he will give them the strength to deal with their hardships and the words to say in defense of the gospel, one could be led to be fearful by the apparent message of doom and gloom in today's readings. Yet the message for those who are responding to the Lord Jesus is one of encouragement, hope, and even excitement. If one has accepted the good news of salvation and patterned one's life on living the gospel, then one is reassured that the end of one's existence on this earth, though possibly painful, is not the ultimate destiny and end of one's life. God has promised an eternal life of solace, healing, wholeness, salvation, for those who respond faithfully to God. It is true that Jesus will come to judge the world with justice. Justice implies that those who have lived a life apart from God, atheos, will be allowed to live all eternity apart from God. Those who have accepted the Lord Jesus and his Abba Father into their lives and have striven to reflect the gift of salvation which they have received will be blessed with a continued relationship with God as they move toward God, ad deum, and for all of their lives they will be with God forever and ever. God justly judges each person according to what they have freely chosen to do with the gift of salvation offered to them. As I reflect on heaven and hell, I realize that heaven is being in relationship with God, being in God's presence, without end. I can begin that heavenly experience of God's being with me while on earth, even while suffering and going through all sorts of hardship. I begin my future destiny right now by the attitude I have and by the way I live my life in response to God's graciousness. On the flip side, hell is being separated from God. This is not God's choice for our endless existence after death. Yet God, just judge that God is, will give people what they have desired and lived in this life. If individuals have not accepted the graces and gifts from God and have resolutely rejected God's good news, and have declared in words and in actions that they want nothing to do with God, God grants them their decision by keeping them apart from God for all eternity. Although God continues to give mortals chances to turn to the Lord Jesus throughout their lives on earth, God will not force divine love upon individuals who freely choose to be without God. God will not drag people into the divine presence in heaven against their will. Hell is the living out of one's choice to be godless, forever. The choice is ours. We can accept what God has promised and we can live a life faithful to the Lord Jesus who loves us, or we can reject all that God offers and spend eternity without God. God, the eternal and just judge, carries out the sentence which we have chosen for ourselves. To accept what God offers means we have to work at living it out in our lives. That is part of what Paul urges the Thessalonians to do. They must work at their faith. They must not be busybodies who sit around and criticize others. They must do their fair share in spreading the faith, for the Lord Jesus is coming, but may not be here immediately. We must live our lives with the realization that we are facing the end. Our earthly existence is limited. We cannot take it with us. We are going to die and meet the Lord Jesus. That will be the end of our life on this earth as we know it. Do our lives demonstrate that we are working and living for the Lord Jesus, or do they show that we are only concerned about the here and now and what we can get out of it? We have to make the choice, and our lives must, and will, now and forever, reflect the choice we make.
And the Lord Jesus will confirm our choice when we are judged not only at the moment of our death but at the end of time when our choice will be evident to all. To quote the words of Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, This day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life, so that you and your children may live. The personal question slash action for today. How do I picture heaven and hell? Do I believe that I can begin the experience of heaven while still on earth, just as I begin to live a hellish life while on earth? What choices have I made in my life that demonstrate that I have chosen to accept the gift of living in God's presence? What further choices must I be willing to make? How can I help others make choices which reflect the desire to be part of the heavenly reign of God? Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, just judge of all who live on this earth. Through your goodness you offer us a relationship with you through your Son Jesus. You have given us the choice to freely accept this gift or to reject it. At times we have been so concerned for our earthly existence that we have given little thought to what you have presented to us. For our lack of interest in your gift and for our outright rejection of your love, we seek your forgiveness with contrite and humbled hearts. Through the empowerment of your Holy Spirit, give us the strength, joy, courage, and wisdom to fully accept your invitation and work to our fullest to further the spread of your good news. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus who has lived and ministered, died, and rose in order that we might be welcomed into your eternal presence. It is he who now is living and reigning with you in the Holy Spirit, our one and only God, forever and ever. Amen. Presented by Father Frankie Fernandez OFM Capuchin Justice Peace Integrity Creation. JPIC. Capuchin Goa.